Good morning. Welcome to Light on the Corner Church. Not only were they diseased, they were contagious. And not only were they beggars, they were sinners. How else can you explain their condition? Have you ever seen people who have to live with the consequences of their own bad choices? Isn't that what we have here in this case? That's what the rabbis taught. Leprosy was caused by sin. So if you're a leper, you're not only sick, but you're guilty too. So they situate themselves by the road at a distance, at a distance because that's what the Hebrew scriptures command. Stay at a distance. And they're near the road so they can beg for money. They can shout loud enough so that people can hear them and then help them financially. But let's read the text, which we haven't done yet which you will find in your own Bibles in Luke chapter 17. Luke 17, starting with verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out, in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. That's kind of a wonderful hallmark moment. Yeah, I hear you. Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. 
One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. You should have some disdain in your voice when you say that word, Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Let me pause for just a moment and utter a brief prayer. Lord God, help us to preach today. Help us to be thankful, grateful, and look for things that we can declare to you in private and in public that we are thankful for. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Jesus happens to be on his way south from Galilee to Jerusalem. But Samaria is in between Galilee and Jerusalem. And there on the road along the border between Samaria and Galilee, Jesus is confronted by ten lepers. They keep their distance, and so does Jesus. But they recognize him and call out to him by name, Jesus. But they also call him something else, Master. The Greek is Yesu, Epistrata. Yesu, Epistrata, Jesus, Master. And then rather than begging him for money or food, they ask for something else. Mercy. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Don't you want to see Jesus bravely walk right into the middle of them and lovingly touch them and say, Be healed, my children. But he doesn't do anything of the sort. Instead, he just calls back to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. Go show yourselves to the priests. That's it. Isn't that a strange prescription for healing? You know, people went to see the priests to confirm their healing, not to receive their healing. But all of them obediently shuffle off. They can't run. Their feet are numb. But they all went. And along the way, the religious outcast of the group, the Samaritan, stops and realizes what Jesus has just done for him. What did the Jewish priests ever do for me but condemn me, he thought. You know, I can go see the priests anytime. Right now, I'd rather thank the one who healed me. And so the Samaritan returned to Jesus with new fingers and toes, loudly praising God all the way. He threw himself at Jesus' feet in humble gratitude and said two words that really should be our best friends. Thank you. Thank you. That reminds me of the famous 17th century English Bible scholar Matthew Henry, who was once attacked by thieves and robbed of his purse. He wrote in his diary, Let me be thankful. First, I was never robbed before. Second, although they took my purse, they didn't take my life. Third, although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, let me be thankful because it was I who was robbed and not I who did the robbing. 
Jesus looked at his disciples. Didn't I heal ten? Where are the other nine? How is it that only this foreigner returns to praise God? Why do you suppose that was? Why was it only the Samaritan who came back to thank Jesus? One of my favorite preachers, Fred Craddock, addresses this very point. He, and I'll include the quote so you can read it too along with me. He said, it, it is often the stranger in the church who sings most joyfully the hymns we have long left to the choir. It's often the stranger who expresses gratitude for blessings we had not noticed, who listens attentively to the sermon we think we've already heard, who gets excited about our old Bible, and who becomes actively involved in acts of service to which we send small donations. I see what Fred Craddock is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard this leper story. We grew up in church. We've heard this leper story lots of times. Where are the nine? Got it. Where are the nine, the preacher says. Where are the nine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we learned this in Sunday school. Can we move on, please? We should be more thankful. Okay, we got it. Where are the nine? We got it. Not thankful enough. Mia culpa, guilty. Okay, let's wrap this up and move along. Where are the nine? Not grateful enough. Well, is that what this passage is about? Is that why it's in the Bible? So that people like me, preachers, can use it as a club to beat you with for not being sufficiently thankful? Is that why this is in the Bible? So that I can make you feel guilty for not being grateful enough? I should tell you, dear ones, it's not my point to wag my finger at you and scold you for not being sufficiently grateful or for not giving thanks often enough. That's not where I'm coming from. I would ask you a question, however, and that is this. Would, would you say that giving thanks would you say that giving thanks to God is happening more and more in your life or less and less? What is the, in other words, what is the trend? The, the gratitude trend in your life towards more and more gratitude or less and less? Do you give thanks? before meals like you used to? Or has that gone by the wayside? Every time you pray, God hears you. Or has anyone in public ever heard you say what the Samaritan leper said? Thank you, Jesus. For whatever reason, the only leper who returned to give thanks was a Samaritan. And Jesus was not Samaria's Messiah, but Jesus was happy to be this Samaritan's Savior. Jesus looks past all the racism of his day and says this in verse 19, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Well, let's look for a moment at this phrase, made you well. That's three English words. The Greek verb is sozo. Sozo. The primary meaning of sozo is to save. 
It's used 110 times in the New Testament. 93 of those times, it means saved. Earlier in verse 14, on the way to the priests, Luke doesn't say that the ten lepers were saved, but rather that they were cleansed. The Greek word there is katharizo, cleanse. We get our word uh, catharsis from this verb, katharizo. So what happened to Jesus' feet was different than when he yelled to the lepers on the road, go show yourselves to the priests. They were katharizo then, they were healed then. But what happens at Jesus' feet with the Samaritan was different from that. You see, dear ones, all ten lepers were healed, but only one was saved. You see Luke's point in this story? Why do you think God put these nine verses in the Bible? Isn't that the question I ask all the time? Why is this in the Bible? It's a good Bible study question. What's the moral of this story? Well, listen, dear ones. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what your problem is, no matter how unlovable or even ugly you feel about yourself on the outside or the inside, no matter how impossible your circumstances, if you leave the crowd and throw yourself at Jesus' feet in humble faith and thanksgiving, he will save you. Jesus will save you, regardless of what kind of trouble you're in. He saved me. He can save you. Is that good news? For that reason, it's the saved who know thanksgiving best. Now as then, God heals many, but saves only a few. For only a few return in faith to thank Him. Dear ones, it's saved people who truly give thanks. It's the redeemed who return. All people gladly accept blessings and miracles from Jesus, but only people who trust him thank him. No matter who they are or where they're from, that trust, that faith in Jesus saves them. Now, let me ask you, dear ones, did, what do you think? Did all the problems of the Samaritan leper disappear once he was healed and saved? Do you think he experienced any of the normal trials and hardships of life after meeting with Jesus? I think so. But do you think he remained thankful? saying goodbye to his old way of life, the leprous way of life, and walking in newness of life. Do you think he remained thankful for that? I think so. Those whom God has healed and saved are witnesses that God is good. Even when times are bad, God has helped you. God has healed you in the past. And if you're a believer, God has saved you. Even when times are bad, and that's good news. Have you seen a picture, speaking of giving thanks, have you seen a picture of the pilgrims at the first Thanksgiving? There are a couple of very famous uh, pictures of the pilgrims 
at uh, Thanksgiving. Of course, your uh, history teacher in uh, college wants you to think that's all a myth. But do you know that half of their group of the original pilgrims died the first year they were here in America? They had a hard time, and it was a cold winter. Dangers lurked everywhere, but those pilgrims were not overcome by sadness and the death of their loved ones and the dangers and the cold weather. They refused to forget the blessings of God. So they came together and they thanked the Lord for the blessings they had received. Sometimes, I think, we need to lay our assets alongside our losses because every one of us is more blessed than we are hurt. I believe, dear ones, that God is waiting to hear about lots of things. I want to return and say, thank you, Jesus. Will you do so with me this Thanksgiving season? I'll close with a story. A family was seated around their table looking at the annual Thanksgiving bird, which is more expensive than ever this Thanksgiving, by the way. Anyway, this family, from the oldest to the youngest, each one expressed what he was thankful for when... That's the tradition that family had. It's the tradition a lot of families have. So everyone go around the table, say what you're thankful for. And when they finally came to the five-year-old in the family, he began by looking at the turkey and expressing his thanks to the turkey, thanking the turkey, saying that although he had not tasted the turkey, he knew it would be good. Next, he began with a long line of credits, thanking his mother for cooking the turkey and his father for buying the turkey. But there was much more. He said, and I thank you for the checker at the grocery store who checked out the turkey. I thank you for the grocery store people who put it on the shelf. I thank you for the farmer who made the turkey fat. I thank you for the man who made the feed that the turkey ate. And I thank you for those who brought the turkey to the store. And he traced the turkey all the way from its origin to his plate. And then at the end, he solemnly asked his family there, did I leave anybody out? And his much older, wiser, seven-year-old brother said, Yes, God. And quickly and piously, the five-year-old said, I was about to get to him. What am I saying? Dear ones, let's get to him this Thanksgiving while you're busy. Let's bow in prayer. Dear Father, you have given us so many things. One more thing we ask. Please, Lord, give us a grateful heart. A heart grateful enough to return to you. Grateful enough to fall at the feet of your Son, Jesus. Grateful enough to not be ashamed to praise you loudly and a heart grateful enough to tell others what Jesus can do. For these and all the thousands of things you give us, we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you. 